So, um, an interrupt is what, uh, <clears throat> what is an interrupt? Uh, if you're sitting in your room and your phone rings, that's an interrupt. If you pick up, if the phone doesn't have a working buzzer and you pick it up every five seconds, that's called polling. And, uh, If you, uh, if you, you can poll if, uh, if your friend agrees to wait on the line for five minutes, then as long as you check the phone every three minutes, as long as he waits for five minutes, you're okay. But, and what, what that means is, uh, the mouse if you can't get interrupt 12 working just check it every 50 times a second and uh, that's good enough um, okay well let, let's in the kernel in the ints k ints First, you have to set up the two interrupt controllers. Um, 8259, uh, we learned this in school. Um, I had to sneeze, hold on. Oh, okay. Anyway, uh, there's one at 20, port 20, and there's one at port, port A0. They're, um, these are these are the traditional uh, IBM PC interrupts. They start with uh, it's zero zero to well, there's there's sixteen interrupts starting with zero. Anyway, um, <coughs> the processor can have has two fifty six uh, vectors. That means um, uh, what would be the analogy? I guess you have a doorbell, you have a telephone buzzer, you have a, uh, I don't know. Anyway, there's 16 different um, hardware interrupts. The others are um, can be software. Uh, what that means is, uh, oh, I don't think I want to teach. I just want to show you my operating system. I'm not going to teach you x86 architecture so I set up my interrupts I don't use the ACHI uh, advanced interrupt controller or whatever the hell that is I uh, there's there's a newer mechanism for interrupts that's newer than the old school but it's really complicated so I don't um, I did a demo in my demo lecture directory if you go to demo lectures, do PCI interrupts. This this attempts to uh, or this does PCI interrupts. I'm gonna hit a keyboard about five times. Okay, so instead of instead of 16 interrupts, you have like A, B, C, and D, but it's pretty crazy. I don't even understand it to be quite honest. Um, I hit my keyboard eight times. So this is this is the USB. But uh, uh, this is the Ace Advanced Interrupt Controller. Um, so there's A, B, C, and D, but there's uh, I don't even understand it. Anyway, I I read through it enough to uh, make this demo, and then I forgot. the The problem is uh, even if I it's too complicated uh, figuring out which interrupt goes to what device. So I decided that was beyond the scope of Temple OS. Um, it's actually cluster fucked on purpose by the CIA. But never mind. Anyway, so using the old interrupts, so we have to set up the, uh, the 256 vectors. Um, only only 16 are hardware 
So, do you know what a software interrupt is? It's basically, uh, well, uh, I, I think I only use one software interrupt, and that's non-maskable, I don't remember. Um, software interrupts are slow, and I have no reason to use them. I don't change privilege, privilege, privilege levels, and I don't change stack. So the software interrupts are, uh, I don't even think Linux likes to use them. It, they use a, a syscall and stuff or whatever. So there's uh, 16 hardware interrupts. Number number two is the now these two uh, these two controllers uh, they're cascaded. What that means is uh, um, the secondary chip uh, is connected to one pin on the primary, and so interrupt two. They have masters and slaves. Anyway, so in the, uh, let's go find the Intel data sheet. This is your best friend if you're making an operating system. Um, what are we looking for? We are looking for... I think number three. Number three A. Okay, we're looking for interrupts. So uh, everybody at OS Dev is working working on 32-bit operating systems. Um, we need to look at the interrupt table for interrupt descriptor table for. Uh, you get these basically the first uh, four times 256 bytes are uh, in real mode that, that's your interrupt vector table um, in uh, protected mode and long mode you have a register that points to your table so you can put it in other places in, in real mode, it used to go at address zero, and that's why um, you don't see those used for other things. That's why things don't start at address zero in real mode. So uh, let's look at 64-bit uh, mode. I don't think this... Basically, they're double the size, and uh, there's three types of interrupt descriptor table entries. Uh, handling in 64-bit mode, okay. 64-bit mode, okay. So it's, uh, there's, this is 32, and another 32, and another 32, and another 32. So it's double the size. Um, so the vector is uh, kind of broken in pieces. Isn't that lovely? So you have uh, you have the vector starting 0 to 15, 16 to 32, and then the rest of it. And uh, then you have, there's three types of uh, interrupt descriptor table entries. Uh, there's a trap, there's a, IRQ and there's a uh, I don't know I, I we only do the IRQs pretty much um, I don't do software interrupts I did a long time ago for uh, I did some math operations I had multiply and divide I think uh, for anyway I had it um, that was way back in 2005 Anyway, um, so these these have to normally you change from ring three to ring zero to do system information. You know, all this stuff got really messed up. Now they don't even most of this stuff is uh, is uh, vestigial. I don't know what you want to call it. I think I think uh, I think Linux uses uh, syscalls. Linux and Windows. 
so this stuff is kind of like vestigial. You know how humans have tail bones? Anyway. So, uh, so I, 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 you saw where the first 16 bits were, uh, the first 16 bits of the vector, and then the other 16, and then the other 32. So right here it's filling in an interrupt table vector. I do post-fix type casting, so I have a pointer and I'm type casting it, and, uh, there's three different types. There's an IRQ, there's a trap, and there's a task, a task gate. Uh, one of them has, one of them turns off the uh, the interrupt flag, and one keeps it on. That's the, there's there's an IRQ, which is a hardware, and then I don't remember. There's one that that keeps. Normally, you want to turn off interrupts until you finish and enable them. Um, so, so the when the vector is called, it's normally called with interrupts off, and then um, you need to. Oh well, let's go look at a, hand, a handler. So I. Uh, oh, I forgot. I, I totally forgot. The first 32 interrupts are uh, are processor uh, 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 traps or so. I don't know what the terminology is. The first 32 interrupts are, uh, you, interrupt 13 is a protected protection fault, isn't that what it is? Um, there's a uh, page fault, I should know. Anyway, uh, there's divide by zero, which is number zero, and then there's an unmaskable there's one that that happens even if interrupts are turned off and what I reserved that for I got to thinking uh, what do I do with if a core has is crashed and a core has interrupts turned off and so what I decided was uh, I was going to use my unmaskable for uh, rescuing a, uh, a core that got turned off I think I think that's what this is. I don't remember. So when you start getting into multi-core interrupts, um, they're done. They're kind of like software interrupts. You write a number to a, to a. Uh, you make a software interrupt by uh, for a multi-core by uh, uh, you. Multi-core interrupt. You write the interrupt number you want to be generated and stuff like that. Um, Non-maskable, generate non-maskable. So you just, these numbers here are, uh, you start getting into, uh, instead of using the interrupt pin, they start, they start sending stuff over the bus uh, what do they call those? System management? I don't know if that's system management. I don't know. Anyway, the advanced interrupts are something I don't want to deal with. Um, so once you once you have, let's go look at. So I use the timer interrupt, which is number zero. Where is my interrupt handler? The timer. Uh, I have a Jiffy count. I, this is called a thousand times a second. It's interrupt zero, which means it's interrupt 32. Um, there, it's, there, it's hardware interrupt zero, zero out of 16, and it's uh, it's mapped to vector 32, which is the first one um, after the uh, the ones used for the processor. It calls a uh, it calls a it calls a routine that I have. Now I generate a uh, multi-core interrupt on all the other cores every time I get it. Only core zero. I don't know. Is that true? Only core zero gets interrupts. And um, I I generate an interrupt. So I get, I get a thousand interrupts a second. 
and in my interrupt handler, I, I, I interrupt all the other cores a thousand times a second. And uh, I used to uh, do preemption, and I would I would change tasks, but I I I don't do preemption anymore, and so this timer interrupt doesn't really do a whole lot. Um, it used to be critical for preemption, but that I decided was beyond the scope. So uh, as you can see, I've uh, I've can't, I've made some deliberate choices to keep it uh, simple simple. And when I started seeing it getting cruddy, crappy, and clusterfucked, I said, this is not, this is beyond the scope of what I want. So I got rid of preemption. We, we don't use the advanced interrupts. Um, they don't really provide anything better. I mean, a keyboard is a keyboard, right? It's not like you have a good keyboard handler and a bad keyboard handler. You know, a mouse, either a mouse works or it doesn't work. It's not like there's a good mouse and... You can't make the mouse better with USB handlers or something. So, uh, so let's go look at, so interrupt zero. Zero is the timer. One is the keyboard. Twelve is the mouse. And, uh, uh, are those the only ones we deal with? Uh, now the keyboard and the mouse are PS2 legacy mode. I don't use USB mode. Um, and uh, they, they, they routed them into the same I.O. ports. And so they get mixed up. Um, your keyboard and mouse uh, data packets get mixed up unless you access them in the interrupt whenever you get a one interrupt re read all make sure to read all the keyboard byte packet bytes when you get a 12 interrupt make sure to read all the mouse bytes and it turns out I've had computers where the BIOS enabled the keyboard but it it fucked up the mouse and so I had to pull the mouse when the BIOS starts, it, it sets these things up and gets them running. And um, I've had cases where the, the mouse interrupt didn't work. And I, fortunately, I could pull. Um, if the timer interrupt is interrupting a thousand times a second, then all you do is you, it's like you're, you pick up the telephone a thousand times a second. As long as you can check it real fast, it's not really a problem. <clears throat> so in my so I do am I missing one I think I'm missing one I don't remember anyway uh, so when I set up my keyboard uh, this is keyboard handler uh, this initializes the keyboard it it calls the the routine to set the vector in the table and then it uh, unmasks it there's a, uh, it's, keyboard is number one, and what are we doing? Zero, one, that's a two because it's a bit value. Bit, you have eight bits in, in the mask. A one is, interrupt zero. So it reads the old value of the mask, and then it clears the bit, and then it, it pokes it to, it sends it, out and um, so we're telling it I IRQ keyboard so IRQ keyboard is my actual this is my actual handler when the vector is triggered it uh, it goes to this routine now I um, I made my compiler smart enough to uh, The old compilers used to uh, turbo compile turbo C. Everyone used to write interrupt routines, and so the compiler had a keyword. Now, whatever it, whenever it sees the interrupt 
routine, or the interrupt keyword, then that means the return is an IRET, and all the all the registers that normally get destroyed, it is careful to preserve those. So it preserves all these, and it uses an IRET. So uh, my compiler is so kick-ass that it has a. Uh, It has a, an interrupt keyword for uh, putting in front in front of uh, interrupt keyword in front of the handler, and that's all you have to do. Here it's clearing the direction when you do a um, move move string constant or there's uh, anyway. That gets preserved. The interrupt uh, pops the flags when it's done, and that returns them anyway. So what do we do in here? We uh, we acknowledge the interrupt to the. This is to the master. Um, inter when we do interrupt 12, let's go ahead and look at the mouse. So the mouse it has an interrupt handler, and this has to acknowledge both the master and the slave. You acknowledge the slave and then you acknowledge the master. These are the two interrupt controllers that each do eight. They're cascaded. And we read a packet. I um, I check if we've had a timeout error and reset it. Sometimes a, I think a packet is like three bytes or something and uh, four bytes if if something got screwed up you would want to you want to flush the old few couple bytes if it's been too long you want I don't, I don't know I, some of this stuff I'm, I'm not actually sure is necessary but I do it um, you, as a matter of fact when you're using VMware um, as a matter of fact why When you're using VMware, once in a while, you can, I, I'm pretty sure you can miss a, a, a byte, and then you get out of sync. If you're expecting three byte packets and you get out of sync, that's bad. So uh, I, I get the timestamp. The timestamp is the fastest uh, timer you can read. What I mean is... Uh, well, HPET is just as fat. There, I'm not talking about frequency. I'm talking about how fast you can read it. There's a, there's a uh, well, HPET is pretty fast, but I've had things that didn't have an H high performance event timer. Um, the problem with the timestamp count is uh, it's uh, this is like three gigahertz, but the uh, the processor gets throttled and stuff like that. So it's actually um, it's. Anyway, um, so uh, I use a FIFO for my packets. They're so tiny, I, I really didn't need that, but I, I went ahead and did it. Uh, I think it's three bytes. Um, and uh, this is checking if we have too many. And uh, what is it doing? Oh, it's transferring them from a... Uh, There's two FIFOs, FIFO 0 and FIFO 2. Um, I, I think that's just, uh, why did I do that? If it, if it gets a, a well-formed packet, it transfers it. And as a matter of fact, I might do that in the timer. I have a, a, a window manager task. Um, I have a couple of executives. Um, the atom task doesn't really the atom doesn't run the atom task doesn't run all the time the seth tasks do run the window manager runs the, the atom task i think stays asleep until he actually gets a request 
the window manager runs um, the the window manager runs 50 times a second I think no 30 times a second we we refresh the screen 30 times a second I don't even remember uh, so I have a couple of uh, maintenance I think we process the mouse packets and keyboard packets I think they call it pumping the packets um, so he has a the window manager has a sleep uh, window manager sleep so this is kind of like the uh, the idle I don't know what you want to call it when I can go ahead and explain when you're uh, when you grab a window and move it what has happened is the window manager has detected the left button down on the b title bar and that enters like a state machine um, when it gets the left button down if the old left button was down and the new left button is up okay what we in that case we want old old left button is we want old left button old left button up new left button down then some of these things stay in a loop and uh, as they're looping they're calling uh, the sleep and uh, that's the way the, uh, the window manager manages so you get these loops where it's calling the sleep waiting for the button to be released and so the sleep uh, uh, I think I screwed. Anyway, the sleep pumps the uh, the it pumps the messages, so it it takes them out of the FIFO and processes them and gives and it gives them to the windows that are the tasks in question. So uh, how about that? Uh, let's let's call it a, call it a day.